So we're going to be taking a look at um, really the gospel tradition um, specifically, but a little bit more broadly, we're going to be looking at the whole idea of using the guitar for sacred music. We really think about it, um, what we call gospel starts in the 1930s. It's, uh, it's an urban style, and it's really pioneered by a great piano player and some other great piano players, but specifically the person we call the father of gospel music is Thomas A. Dorsey. Now, Thomas Dorsey was also called Georgia Tom Dorsey when he used to play barrel house piano behind one Tampa Red. And so gospel and blues always share the same roots. In fact, gospel comes out of blues uh, because Reverend Dorsey or, or, or Professor Dorsey decided that black music had sort of started to lose its vitality in the church, and he wanted to combine it with the blues, the boogie-woogie, the barrel house piano that he knew worked uh, in terms of emotion. And so he came up with this new style called gospel. But the roots of gospel go all the way back to slavery. And you think about it, the original spirituals were probably largely unaccompanied. Nobody's in the cotton field playing a guitar. Nobody's on the plantation necessarily playing an instrument while you're working. So it's primarily a vocal experience. And it is really what happens when black music or African music meets European music in the Deep South, right? So a lot of the concepts, the language, uh, even some of the hymns come through uh, missionaries during the Great Awakening in the 1800s. But the way that you sing them, the, the approach is African. So let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, you, you um, have a song like um, Amazing Grace. And Amazing Grace in one church sounds pretty straight ahead. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But if you went to the other end of the plantation, you might hear something more like, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. Now those two versions basically are the same song, but certainly don't sound the same. And part of what's changed them is the experience of African music meeting European music. Coming off of a ship like the Mayflower, you brought that scale, that way of getting from an E to another E. But coming off of a ship like the Amistad, you brought the minor pentatonic scale. Only five notes getting from this E to that E, but changes the way the song sounds. So you take those two and you put them back to back with people who are listening to each other singing and working all the time. And you get this amazing mix, which really becomes American music, right? So that leads eventually to this music we call the spiritual. And at first, what we really want to talk about is the fact that this sacred music can be experienced in three ways. Um, the great music writer Albert Murray talked about the idea that you have folk music, you have um, popular music, and you had classical music, right? Well, in, in this sense, we're talking about the spiritual, the prayer and praise hymn, and then gospel. The spiritual is a little bit distinct in that, again, it's born in slavery, and it's really kind of whatever you wish to make it. Um, individual singers take wildly different approaches to it. And it can be a moan or it can be, it can be rejoicing. It'd be whatever you need it to be. But then when you take those people and put them together in a group where it's uh, largely call and response and people are singing together, you kind of have, have to have a little bit more structure. The, the idea of the singer leads and the congregation responds. But then when you get to gospel in the 30s, what you do is you take popular music styles that are already popular, but then you sing 
um, praise or you sing sacred uh, lyrics to them. That's why you have um, our, some gospel it sounds like R&B, some gospel sounds like bluegrass, some gospel sounds like honky tonk. And a large part of that gospel came out of the blues tradition and sounds like classic blues, but you do some things that make it sound sacred. So part of what we're gonna get into in this package is how do you make that guitar sound more like church than like the bar room, more like sacred than like secular. So let's get at it. We'll talk a little bit, show a little bit about what makes it sound like a spiritual, what makes it sound like a prayer and praise hymn, and what makes it sound like gospel. 